Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, alhamdulillah that I'm here. Uh, please forgive me if uh, I had a very long day. So if I say anything wrong, just, you know, I know we're all here, I'm not judging anyone. So um, I would appreciate that. Um, I wish we were meeting under different circumstances. Um, but alhamdulillah for the space that um, we have here. So we could all be here for each other and support each other in this very difficult time. Um, everything that I wanted to say has already been shared. So, uh, so uh, by by Dr. Rania and uh, Dr. Zahra. But um, I will I will share some some stuff. I work with kids um, as well. I work with kids from um, ages four, five to grade five. Um, and um, one thing that I wanted to emphasize is that, you know, the um, kids look up to parents when it comes to emotional regulation. So you guys are the role model for your kids. They look up to you and see how you deal with your emotions. And that's how they learn to deal with their own emotions. So if we have, you know, like, of course, this is such a difficult time. And we're all, like, almost glued to our TVs and, and, and um, phones. And, you know, if, what, whatever page you open, there's something that's very tragic. And it's... Um, you know, we're human and they are our own loved uh, brothers and um, sisters and for some of us could be very close family members. So it's very difficult for us as adults to be really not feeling those intense feelings that come with such, um, you know, experiencing such major trauma. And kids look up to you. So how you deal with your emotions is how they will do it. And especially the very young ones, they, they don't like to see their parents sad. Um, so what they will do is if they see you not being able to deal with your own emotions, they will turn inwards. They're not going to talk about their own problems or issues. And a lot of the times, some of them may know about what is going on. Some of them may not know. But then they will still see you, you know, dealing with a lot of different emotions. And then they will hold on to whatever they have. And for, for these young, very young kids, you know, a, a little thing that might look very trivial for us, it's a big major thing for them. And then for them not to be able to come to, to their parents because they are so stressed out and they're like, I don't want to go, I don't want to burden my parents any further, right? Then, you know, then we have really um, suppressed their feeling. We, we have really thought them that, you know, it's not okay for them to open up when they have difficult feelings. So as much as possible, as much as you can, focus on how to, um, you know, on how to be grounded, how to be in the present, right? Um, try to limit your exposure to, to graphic content, to the media. And that would go the same with your kids that are, you know, monitor what they're watching, what they're being told. Um, you know, whether we like it or not, they're going to hear it from the outside. So why don't you be that source, right? You know, why don't you make that environment, create that environment for them where they can come to you. You know, you, you, know, you can listen to them, validate their feelings, and also provide them with accurate information because they are getting a lot of inaccurate information mm -hmm. from media. You know, you open Instagram, there's like you're bombarded with these different um, um, things that are not accurate. And then they go to school. Right? They go to school and they're exposed to a lot there. And a lot of them feel very isolated in school. It's very isolating. Um, you probably feel it in your own workplaces where, you know, our experiences are not validated. And so that really feels us feel isolated. And for kids, that's like, you know, when they don't have an outlet to, to um, safely discuss what they're feeling, um, it is, you know, what they would do is they would suppress those feelings. And then... Um, a lot of the time, kids, they don't have the, the like, especially younger ones, the, the verbal articulation to come and talk to you and say, hey, you know, this is what. They're just going to show you in different ways. So you might see changes in um, sleep patterns. You, could, you, may, you might see, uh, like, behavioral issues. You have, you know, like, kids because they want to have control. They want to have some sort of control in whatever is happening. So maybe they will start to, um, then, you know, say, I don't want to go to school. They might develop, like, all of a sudden, this anxiety. They cannot let go of parents. Um, so, and then there's, um, you know, the, the, also there's the, the fact that, so, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome back. 
guys. Um, so I was, as I was talking about um, ways to help kids feel validated and heard, um, you know, I, I would emphasize to um, continue to maintain a routine, their normal routine as much as possible, because that gives the kids a sense of control over the situation. Um, and then, um, like I said before, limit their exposure to media. Sometimes maybe with the, with the older ones, maybe you can watch the news together. That way you can control um, what they're watching and also, you know, correct any, um, you know, anything that's not factual. And other thing that I wanted to mention is that if your kid is old enough um, to learn about um, if they have learned about other genocides at school, then this is, it will be okay to have that conversation about the conflict, this conflict about them and the history of that and going, you know, making it like as a, as a, almost like a research project where you go together with your child to, uh, you know, um, trusting sources to help them understand the situation better. The more they, um, you know, it's, it's clear for them and the more that they understand they can come to you when they have um, difficult emotions, the better they will be able to uh, deal with the situation. Um, other thing is that, you know, sometimes we, um, we're so worried um, that we're constantly, maybe it's family member, or we constantly um, look for the news, or we're constantly calling people to make sure that family members are okay, that, um, you know, a lot of other symptoms may develop, and you can see um, in your youth uh, that include, like, lack of sleep, they're having difficulty um, focusing and concentrating. Um, they are having difficulty uh, connecting with others. So in these cases, making sure that you, as much as you can, you, you know, surround yourself by supporting people. So staying connected with your community. Um, if there are kids, right, having that group, like play dates, whatever it is, where you have other people that are like-minded, that are... Um, you know, supportive of your cause, and you get together with them, and allowing them that a atmosphere to be able to be themselves and not feel like they're being judged, not feel like what they're saying is wrong, and that you know there's them against someone else. But they're all, you know, we're all together, just like over here. You know, we're here to support each other, creating that kind of um, atmosphere for our kids, so they feel validated, so they feel supported and not isolated. Um, some, um, I know, we are very tight on time, but one thing that I wanted to mention about very young ones, sometimes they don't understand, um, you know, because they are so young, they don't understand how close they are to the conflict. So it's very important that, you know, maybe um, that you make that clarification for them. For example, you can actually bring out a map, right, and then tell them this is where we we live where we are, and this is where the location is. And for, you know, and that, that could be you know, for us, it's not a big deal, but for young kids, you know, it's about their safety. They want to feel safe. And if you are providing that for them, you're, uh, you're basically allowing them, giving them permission that to, to feel af to, it's okay to be afraid. And, you know, staying away from um, phrases like, don't be sad, because sadness is a very normal reaction to what is going on around us. Or don't be afraid. These are, you know, these are emotions. Emotions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have, have created, um, he has created these for a reason. And they're there for us to experience. So we want to make sure that as parents, we're allowing ourselves and our children to be able to express them in a, in a, in a you know, in a, an adaptive way. And kids, they don't know how to, you know, channel their feelings. But you can be that source for them. You can create that safety for them that where, um, you know, they can work through their feelings. You can do work, art together, create something together, go for walks together. Um, just sit down and sometimes just be with them, right? You know, listen to them without passing any judgment. Um, ask them open-ended questions. Um, and um, try not to judge what they are saying and what they are bringing into uh, the conversation. Um, let them lead, basically, the conversation. And just one other thing that, you know, sometimes for some kids who are already stressed out or are dealing with other mental health issues, suicide could be a high risk at this time because this is a very stressful situation and this could be that one last thing that pushes them off the edge. So really be being, uh, you know, watchful 
and really being there for your kids and uh, making sure that they feel validated, they are heard and um, supported. You can meditate together. You can, uh, go, like I said, go for walks together, color together, um, and just anything that would give them a sense that they're not alone. It, it, it's, it's very, like I sit down myself with my kids and we have like these big coloring pages and we just color. And I find it very, um, you know, relieving and it feels very calm and peaceful. We're not even talking sometimes and we are just coloring. And it's, it's, and it's a big bonding thing too, right? We're bonding with them and at the same time we're letting them know that this is one safe way to express your feelings and emotions. Um, like I said, everyone has covered everything that I have said, <laughs> but just, just be careful, be watchful. If you see that your kid is... Um, they're, you know, like maybe they're regressing, like Dr. Rania said, maybe they're becoming more aggressive. If this is something that has, these changes have lasted more than two weeks, that this is where you need to be concerned. Reach out to someone, in, um, you know, to their doctors or mental health um, clinicians, so that way they can get the support that they need um, as well. Like, just like all of us, we all need support. So there's, I just want to make sure that you understand that there's no shame in seeking that help. Thank you. And we're putting some resources in the in the um, WhatsApp and the chat box for either coloring books with children or books related to um, or resources. And um, we'll also in that guide that I was telling you about earlier, there's some links related to um, uh, other resources for you and for them in terms of how to talk about Palestine. What is the history? What is the work? In case that they're trying to make sure that their facts are straight. And your facts are straight, inshallah ta'ala, in a time where there's a whole lot of misinformation and, lo and lack of correct facts. We'll send to Mona, inshallah. And as I pass it on to Mona, I just want to add one last thing, that it's okay to tell your kids you don't know. Yes. It's totally fine. And that, I think, makes it more human and more, you know, something that they can uh, connect with.